Hey, it's Veronica, the Heart Dietitian. Today we're talking all about how to eat if you have been diagnosed with POTS. Now, I don't want to go into what POTS is. Um, I'm sure there's lots of videos about that. And we're talking all about food and how to manage POTS and the symptoms related to POTS. So what are these symptoms? Well, because POTS is a condition that affects the autonomic nervous system, symptoms like uh, fast heart rate, dizziness when um, going from sitting to standing, fatigue, low or high blood pressure. Um, those are some symptoms that actually uh, food and nutrition can play a really big role in trying to manage these symptoms. And that's what I wanted to talk to you today. I am a dietitian specializing in heart disease, and I have seen individuals or I work with individuals who are living with POTS. And when I'm working with them, I notice five mistakes that I see commonly, and I wanted to address them today. And hopefully this will help others who are living with POTS and maybe struggling or uh, perhaps um, unsure of some of the diet recommendations out there. So let's start with mistake number one. I often see individuals eating large meals. So this is often the case because before people were diagnosed with POTS, Oftentimes we eat three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then snacks if we're hungry. But once we're diagnosed with POTS, a large meal can cause some of these symptoms of bloating, maybe uncomfortable feeling, um, slow digestion perhaps, and in just overall feeling sick. And I don't think anyone wants to experience any of those symptoms. So a trick, instead of eating the regular three meals a day, is to actually eat smaller meals more frequently. So perhaps it's four to six, maybe it's six to eight. I would play around with this and see what works for you. But think about what you typically ate for lunch in the past, and then maybe split it up into two or three servings. What happens when you eat at any time, it, whether you're living with POTS or not, a lot of our blood flow is... Uh, transferred and prioritized for digestion. So the blood flow is going to the stomach and the bowels. And because of that, it's moving from the extremities into your stomach. And then you could experience those that dizziness. Um, perhaps if you don't have enough blood flow, then the digestion is really slow and you could experience bloating or perhaps just too much food in your stomach at once that takes too long. It could push out on the diaphragm and just, again, feel uncomfortable. Um, so to mitigate some of those symptoms, try these just small, frequent meals and see how that works for you. So you don't necessarily have to change the food composition of what you're eating, but just break it up into smaller volumes of food. Okay, now mistake number two is increasing salts from processed foods. So often individuals who are living with POTS need a higher salt diet to help with fluid retention because often there isn't enough fluid and or it's pooling at the bottom of your feet and you have to circulate it up. So we're trying to get more volume in your body. We could do that with two things, uh, salt and water or fluid. So making sure you're drinking enough, but also increasing your salt intake. And this is a general recommendation I see when I'm reading things online, but no one really knows how much salt or sodium to recommend. And in fact, I really encourage you to meet with a health professional to determine what's right for you uh, because not everyone needs a really high dose of salt or sodium, um, but a lot of people are consuming a lot of salt and sodium because of the recommendations online. So make sure you follow up with your healthcare professional about that. If you are gonna increase your salt intake, I don't recommend you know, going to the salty foods like eating um, lots of salted chips and processed foods that are high in salt. Instead, what I recommend is eating whole plant foods because those have lots of nutrients that will aid in nourishing your body and strengthening your heart. And when you have these whole plant foods, you can add salt through the salt shaker to increase your sodium that way instead of going to something like potato chips that don't have a lot of nutrients that won't really help support and strengthen your heart, but they add the sodium. 
So I hope that makes sense. Some foods that are naturally high in sodium that are also nutritious could be things like smoked salmon, uh, maybe bone broth, uh, pickles, olives, uh, canned vegetables, even canned legumes or beans. Uh, canned soups are also a good option, as well as uh, salted maybe nuts or seeds. And then cottage cheese is also on the saltier side, but has lots of nutrients like calcium and magnesium. When we're eating for pots, we are often recommending a Mediterranean style diet or eating for our brain health. So the Brain Health Food Guide is a good resource. The Mediterranean diet is also similar to the Brain Health Food Guide. So eating um, in that manner, which promotes more plant foods, more whole foods, less processed foods. Okay, mistake number three that I often see is eating sugar to prevent some of these symptoms. So sometimes when you feel dizzy or unwell, lightheaded, um, eating sugar can help temporarily. However, they don't help in the long run. So let me break that down. So once we consume sugary foods, so things like candy or pop or juice that is just basically sugar, no fiber, no protein, no fat, what happens is we consume it and it's digested very quickly in the stomach because it's already in little sugar molecules and it goes through our intestines, absorbed very quickly into our blood and it spikes our blood sugar very quickly. And that spike of blood sugar temporarily makes us feel good. However, our body doesn't like our blood sugar to be high for a long period of time. So what it does is it works really, really hard. It, our organ, the pancreas, secretes a hormone, hormone called insulin that is also released into the blood to help that sugar in the blood to get into your muscle cells to be used as energy. So your body's working really hard to secrete insulin. It moves the sugar in and when you're up here, right, with the sugar high, your body brings you down pretty drastically. And that shift from a high blood sugar to a low blood sugar can have those symptoms of being unwell as well. Um, and perhaps I've seen too that individuals are very sensitive to the insulin. Your body's working really hard to secrete a lot of insulin to match the sugar. So you drop, but you actually drop below um, what your body likes to be at, and that's called hypoglycemia. Uh, so this reactive hypoglycemia, again, makes you feel unwell. So you have the shakiness, dizziness, fainting, uh, and we really wanna prevent that. So the mistake that I see is people eat sugar to prevent the symptoms. However, they could temporarily blunt that symptom, but in the long term, cause other symptoms. So what we want to do instead is eat for blood sugar management. Um, if we can eat to not spike our blood sugar too high, in fact, just increase it um, in a, a slow manner, uh, up and down throughout the day, we can do that with eating complex carbohydrates, a little bit of fat and a little bit of protein at each meal, and then eating frequently throughout the day can help us keep that blood sugar up and down in that targeted kind of level that our body likes. And then that can help to manage some of those symptoms that we may be experiencing. Which brings me to mistake number four, I often see individuals limiting fiber. So in North America, we're not eating enough fiber to begin with. Uh, fiber is really important for a lot of um, uh, preventing a lot of chronic diseases like diabetes, um, you know, managing our cholesterol, helping with our blood sugar, also um, our blood pressure, weight management. So lots and lots of benefits in preventing uh, types of cancer like colon cancer. So we want to be eating a lot of fiber. But what I often see is individuals who are living with POTS don't eat fiber because it takes a long time to digest in the stomach or process in the stomach. So your stomach's working hard to digest that fiber. And remember, it's uh, sending a lot of blood and uh, energy to your stomach to help with the digestion. And that's um, maybe taking away the blood from your head um, because it's going into your stomach. And as a result, you may feel you know, dizzy and unwell. However, fiber, like I said, is really important to help with just general health and our gut health, right? And our inflammation, which could also help with POTS in the long term. So what I encourage is eating a small amount of fiber throughout the day. So eating it with all your frequent meals, 
uh, having a little bit of fiber instead of having a large dose of fiber at one time that can cause those symptoms. If we spread it out, we'll still be able to eat the amount of fiber that we need in the long term and we won't have those um, symptoms of feeling unwell. And lastly, yeah, mistake number five that I see is individuals aren't eating enough protein. So protein is very important for blood sugar management. And as I said, blood sugar management is something that we need to consider when we're living with POTS. So eating protein with all of your frequent meals, um, as well as eating fiber with all your frequent meals can really help keep that blood sugar in the um, levels that our body likes. So that's really important. However, a lot of the time protein just like fiber, it takes a little bit longer to digest. So some people feel unwell when they're eating some types of protein. Uh, so for example, like a red meat may be a little bit more difficult to digest than something like a plant-based protein like pumpkin seeds. So what I recommend is still having protein with each of your frequent meals, but perhaps trying different types of protein to see what works for you and your digestive system. Because protein is extremely important, like I said, for the blood sugar control, but also for you know our metabolism, making sure we have enough uh, muscle in our system, our muscle to fat ratio, uh, helps with weight management. So lots and lots of important uh, reasons to be eating protein, but, uh, if it's feel, making you feel unwell, I understand why you would be avoiding it. So trying different types of protein and perhaps um, just incorporating some more of this plant-based protein that could be easier to digest in small amounts throughout the day can be helpful. So those are my five mistakes that I often see when I'm counseling individuals living with POTS. If you have any questions or want to see any other videos about POTS, let me know below. I'd love to hear from you.